In a demonstration that I'm about to jump into, you'll see how we leverage a familiar designer. We leverage a familiar uh, uh, set of tools inside of Visual Studio. It's, it's a very familiar F5 experience. And most importantly, the, uh, the item that you're building is an ASP.NET user control. The same markup, the same, uh, the same controls, the same uh, code behind. It is almost an identical process. So let's take a look at that. All right, so let's take a look at how we can leverage our existing ASP.NET development skills to go build what's known as a visual web part. Now here I've got an empty solution. I've got a project here called Feedback Web Part. I haven't done anything other than file new uh, solution here, but I want to uh, quickly walk you through the existing sort of structure of uh, the default template here. First and foremost, we've got uh, a, a packaging editor here. And I can double click on this thing to, uh, to show you sort of an empty designer, which is the case because it's a, it's a new project. Uh, but this is interesting for, for folks that have worked on SharePoint development before. Uh, those of you that have worked on SharePoint know that deployment and packaging is kind of a pain point. And as you might have heard me say earlier, one of the 17, or a few of the 17 manual steps was, uh, were sort of figuring out how to deploy and, and, uh, and hand off your WSP files, your, your deployment packages. Here in Visual Studio 2010, as I add new features, Visual Studio will keep up with the features that I'm adding. They'll add them here in the left-hand side, and I can choose exactly which features I want to uh, include in my deployment packages. So it enables me to customize exactly what's sort of sent out to SharePoint. It's an interesting aside here. But back to uh, the demonstration at hand, let's go and add a Visual Web Part. Now, Visual Web Parts are new in both Visual Studio 2010 as well as in SharePoint 2010. And as I mentioned before, they enable me as an ASP.NET developer to feel right at home inside of uh, SharePoint development. So I'll call this thing Feedback Web Part. Web Part uh, Demo. OK, let's try that. I will add it to my solution here. And let me close the uh, packaging editor. OK, so Visual Studio is going to open up something that should look very familiar to you if you've worked on uh, web forms, for example. We have the web forms designer. We've got source view, we've got design view, we've got split view. Uh, this is something that, uh, that you should be familiar working with. And in fact, uh, investigating our so uh, solution explorer shows that we've added a, an ASP.NET user control to our solution. So it's a, the experience uh, of building a visual web part is almost identical to that of uh, building an ASP.NET user control. In fact, that's exactly what you're doing. So uh, with that, let me go and open up my toolbox here. Again, should be a familiar set of controls. These are the controls that are available to me as an ASP.NET developer. Um, I can poke into my data controls here, and I can grab a list view. List view is a pretty standard control. And you can see when I add it here, uh, I, I get sort of the, the split uh, editing designing experience. That's great. Rather than, go in, rather than uh, sort of style this, this list view in front of you guys, I've got a, a, a bit of markup here to uh, simplify things a little bit. So I'm going to go and, uh, into my HTML snippets, and um, I'm going to drop in my list view. So let's, um, let's sort of synchronize the designer here. You can see that I've, I've done a bit of styling, and looking at the markup here, it should be fairly straightforward. We've got a list view. We set the layout template, item templates. We're doing a bit of styling here. Uh, really should be very, very straightforward. And we want to go in and uh, data bind this particular web part to uh, an external uh, uh, data service that we have. Those of you that have seen the uh, Windows development session, our launch session, have seen uh, the presenter build this particular data service. In this demo, I'm just going to consume it. So I'll go to Add Service Reference. And I'll sort of manually type out the uh, location of this service. We've got it deployed locally. Uh, I happen to memorize the port number, which is helpful. And type it. We hit go here. Visual Studio is going to uh, look, look and, and sort of discover this particular service. Here it is. It's called Blue Yonder Airline Entities. And this is just a, uh, a, a model that we're exposing in a restful way using WCF data services uh, to go and consume in all the different clients that we have. So SharePoint's no example. We're going to consume that here. And we're going to call that uh, Blue Yonder. Yonder Data. Excellent. Now that we've added that to our project, we want to add a bit of code behind to go and do some data binding between that service and the markup that we just uh, laid out here for our visual web part. 
So we're going to go and jump into uh, the code behind. Ah, here's our friend page load. Again, those of you that have worked with ASP.NET, I, I keep sort of beating this to death, but this should be uh, very, very familiar. It's like building an ASP.NET page here. And so uh, let me add a, a quick snippet here so that I don't have to, uh, to type. Uh, and we're going to use web part code behind. Great. And nothing, nothing uh, too crazy happening here. We're creating a proxy to the data service that we just set up. Uh, this is uh, our core service. And we have a set of entities, and we're going to uh, invoke the. Uh, we're going to go and, and get all the feedback uh, by invoking the proxy here. We're going to set that as a data source, and we're going to data bind our list view. Shouldn't be too complicated, but here comes the magic. Watch this. Those of you that have worked with SharePoint before know that this is truly groundbreaking. I'm going to hit F5. As I do this, I want to take a moment here and just reach out to the SharePoint developers in the crowd. Those of you that uh, have worked on this before, if you were here live with me, you'd be applauding. Uh, again, 17 manual steps. You see what uh, Visual Studio is doing down here. We'll uh, modify the web config. It is retracting existing solutions. It is deploying the features that I specify in, in the, uh, the packaging tool. It is uh, attaching the debugger to the right process. It is doing all of the things that uh, were tedious and manual and very, very painful for SharePoint developers before. And it's popping up uh, a, a browser that has the SharePoint site that's running locally on Windows 7. It just doesn't get uh, that much better in terms of development experience, especially when compared to the world before Visual Studio 2010. And those of you that have worked on SharePoint before know that uh, this is the point in the demonstration which you should get up from your seat, go to the back, grab some coffee, drink some coffee, chat about what's going on, come back in, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes when I sort of have everything configured to do my debugging. Uh, but here you can see that, that we're loading up uh, SharePoint relatively quickly here. And we're going to have SharePoint up, up and running. You'll see that I'll be able to interact with my SharePoint site uh, and, and sort of switch context back and forth. So here I've got my SharePoint site loaded. I'd like to go edit this page. And uh, we'll just hit edit here. And we're going to insert a web part. This is uh, kind of the, the end user experience, but for me as a, as a dev, I'm, I'm doing some debugging right now. And I've got the feedback, uh, feedback web part demo here. This is what we were just working on. Now Visual Studio has sort of pushed that into the right place and enabled me to go and, and pick that here and hit add. Now as I hit add, something really magical is going to happen. Can anyone guess what's going to happen? Boom! We hit the breakpoint back into Visual Studio. That means I've got full debugging support here. I've got uh, autos, watch variables, I've got a call stack, I've got all the things that I'm used to uh, when I'm debugging any other application type. And I've got it all at my fingertips here. I can jump back and forth between my SharePoint site, running locally on my dev machine, and Visual Studio. That is huge, huge, huge. So uh, I'll clear out of this breakpoint. I'll hit a 5 and I'll jump back into my SharePoint site here. The most important takeaway from that demonstration is that we have taken 17 manual steps that existed for SharePoint developers before Visual Studio 2010, and we've placed all of that power right here. We've placed it right in your index finger. As I mentioned, one of the most common scenarios is connecting people and data.